I bid you good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you'll be watching this transmission. It is I, once again, Mike Martins, bringing you another hard-hitting article from Wolf Street, written by Wolf Richer. Guys, check it out. It is from five days ago. I kind of stumbled upon it when I was reading that Zero Hedge article. I kind of want to throw this out there. Stories behind business and finance and money. Check out Wolf Street if you have it. It's, it's a great, it's a great webpage. It, it's great when it comes to actually breaking down the, breaking down things you need to know, Think, break, breaking down, ever wonder why, or trying to understand where or how, just go to Wolf Street and it'll answer all your questions, believe me. U.S. freight shipments plunge at fastest rate since 2009, hit 2011 level. This is going to get, this is getting surprisingly ugly. Guys, this is getting surprisingly ugly because remember guys, basic, basic economics, if you ain't producing and exporting, you don't you ain't got much of an economy, right? A, a good country is based off exports and production and productivity, right? Not housing, not building more housing and get everybody in debt ain't going to work with the disappearing middle class we're having right now. Shipment volume in the U.S. by truck, rail, air, and barge plunged 7.9% in December 2019. That's pretty, that's, that's huge. I don't know how many billions of that could be uh, billions. It's billions of dollars if it's that much. Seven point nine percent compared to a year earlier, according to Cat to Cass Freight Index for shipments, it was the thirteen month in a row year over year declines and the steepest year over year decline since November two thousand and nine during the financial crisis. So here it is, a freight recession. So we're in a freight recession. Last time we saw one was just at the tail end of twenty fourteen into 2015, 2016. Things saw a bit of an uptick in early twenty eighteen. Uh, I think once I guess things started changing. I guess when uh, when uh, the president took office, and then now the tail end of his administration, you're starting to see a decline into a freight recession, right? So it, it goes back. It doesn't show here because this is 2012, but it goes back to 2009. And you guys know if you're living under a rock or just came in from Alpha Centauri. We were in a, in a semi-recession. I like to call it a semi-recession because it was bailed out by the middle class. A semi-recession. The CAS Freight Index tracks shipments, volume of consumer goods, and industrial products and supplies by all modes of transportation. That's a very handy, very handy numbers to know, you know what I'm saying? But it does not track bulk commodities such as grains. As always, when things get ugly... The calendar gets blamed. Christmas fell on a Wednesday, as it does regularly. Uh, more realistically, December was also a month when uh, Keldon Group, with about 3,000 drivers and about 2,700 tractors, filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy and ceased operation. The largest truckload carrier ever to file for bankruptcy in U.S. history. It rounded off a large wave of bankruptcies and shutdowns and tracking companies in 2019. Most of them smaller ones, but also some regional carriers on December 9th from Caledon. Rail traffic December capped off a miserable year with car loads down 9.2% year over year in December and container and trailer loads in, in, intermodal down 19.9%. 0.6% according to the Association of American Railroads. For the 52-week period, traffic and car loads and intermodule units fell 5%. So we've had the Raven several times on the show, and he has an eye on what's going on on the tracks there and with CN and uh, kind of seeing the yards half empty, parking lots of employees half empty and uh, or half full or however we want to say it. The 7.9% year-over-year drop in cash freight, uh, cash freight index pushed it below a slew of prior Decembers, including December 2011. The top black line represents the 2018. The flat red line is 2019. So here it is. There's 2018 right there. So you see it kind of tee off, and then it continues going down from where it left off here. So if you kind of, if you get 2018 here and then connect this to this red, and then it goes up, you see a little bit in uh, April. And then you see a huge drop and everything pretty much go down the water there. Wow, that's huge. We're going to, like I said, 2009. It's not showing 2009 here on this graph, but it, it would show it's going to start meeting or reaching 2009 levels if it keeps on the same course that it's headed, right? Cass, uh, Cass derives 
the data from actual freight invoices paid on behalf of its clients. So this is good. This is like the U numbers when it comes to unemployment in the States or employment and payroll. These are your important numbers, but actually getting from the horse's mouth. This, you're actually getting it from from actual invoices and paid, the things that have been paid for. So you know it's actually a, 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 a real transaction, not some Mickey Mouse uh, fudging of numbers, right? So this data is not based on a sentiment, uh, uh, sorry, on sentiment surveys. It's based on large sample of actual shipments. So sentiments, how do you feel? Well, I'm feeling, you know, that we're not shipping enough oil today or this year. Well, now this way we just go to the actual freight invoices and you will know, right? Uh, involving real money sent by numerous companies across many sectors. The shipment boom in 2018 was... Uh, was a sight to behold it had been fired up by a widespread of efforts to front run the tariffs by loading up on merchandise so some back tracking was to be accept uh, expected but not this plunge in shipments in multi-year lows so remember what happened was a lot of companies uh big box stores were actually ramping up on orders so they don't have to worry about the t the trade wars that we're going through right now right so Trade wars have been going and going, and and we sold our jobs out. Now we're, yeah, we're all going broke now, and the way to fix it is to bring jobs back. They should have did it three administrations ago, not now. Freight expenditures fall but remain high. In 2018, shippers such as an, uh, industrial companies or retailers or manufacturers gro groaned under the surging freight expenditures and complained about it in the earnings report total freight expenditures paid by shippers are a mix of freight rates including fuel surcharges and the volume of shipments some freight rates have remained high and some companies such as ups and fedex have raised their rates despite this environment of falling shipment volume other freight rates have come down under pressure particularly in the trucking sp uh, sp uh, spot market and for months even as shipment volume was dropped to, to the total amount that shippers paid remained stubbornly high, but now this is starting to change. In December, total freight expenditures, the amount of shippers, such as manufacturers, retailers, or industrial companies sent by freight by all modes of transportation dropped 6.2% 6 a year ago. 6.2% is huge. That's in the high, high uh, uh, billions. That's a lot. The steep drop, but expenditures are still dropping more slowly than shipment volume. Uh-oh. Oh. Indicating that there are po pockets like FedEx, UPS, etc. where freight rates continue to rise. And this leaves the CAS freight index for expenditures in December and still high levels throughout the dropping sharply in 2019. Uh, fat red line. Note, that's 2019 right here. Fat red line. Note, yellow, 2017. At the top, uh, on top, at the top of the black line, 2018, as an indicator of how much freight expenditures surge in those two years. So here you go. You have it right here. There it is. There's the fat red line right there. And then you connect that. So let's connect. Uh, so let's go to 2018. Uh, is that one there? Yeah, it's that one there. Then connect it to here. So you go 2018. And then let's connect it to 2019. So you can see how that leaves off. Connects to right there. And you're starting to see the pattern. And there's 2017. You had a really good kind of a uh, kind of a good. When the new presidency took place, you started seeing things pick up real quick. What is causing the sharp, sharp decline in shipments? Retail sales powered by e-commerce are holding up. So guys, middle class has been disappearing. The working poor, middle class, whatever you want to call them, are disappearing. They are no longer making the money they used to. Wages haven't uh, wages haven't kept up with the price, cost of living. Inflation keeps going up. Keep devaluing of the currency. It's the middle class and it's the working poor. It's the people that don't play this game are the ones that are paying for the game. E-commerce is red hot and brick-and-mortar retail is dismal. Retail sales, including commerce, rose 4% in the fourth quarter, according to Commerce Depart uh, Department. Total construction sp uh, spending has bounced off. Remember, housing, housing, housing. That's our GDP is housing. 
In recent months, from lower levels in November, it grew at an annual rate of 4.1% year over year, but remains below the peak of February 2018. So again, housing is a huge contributor to propping the GDP. But manufacturing is weak and getting better. One of the data points on this uh, theme, and there are many others, the ISM Purchasing Manager Index for December dropped 0.9 percentage points from November 47.2, the fifth month in a row of contraction. So it's a shrinking shrinking sector, right? And the fastest contraction since June 2009 with employment, new orders, new ex uh, export orders, productions, uh, backlog off orders and uh, inventories all contracting. So all contracting. So backlog of orders is ba uh, back orders, right? U.S. manufacturing falls to lowest since June 2009. So here we go. This is the key right here. This is uh, ISM manufacturing by PMI. So here is US manufacturing falls to the lowest since June 2009. So we're getting back to those dangerous levels right now. And Matt's the and then it's the highest. And what is the highest? It's 2004 here. Oh, oh, you don't even see it here. Okay, you don't even see it here on the because it's way back. Okay, uh, 2004 is way back. Okay, the oil and gas bust. The oil and gas sector is now undergoing phase two of the bust that started in mid-2014. The price of oil is still down nearly half from where it was then. Guys, do you remember this? And I bring this up every time I hear oil. Do you remember when oil was like $110, $120 a barrel and everyone, well, the price of gas needs to go up because the price of oil is going up. Your price of food would go up because transporting your food would cost more because oil is up and blah, 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 blah. But they never mentioned to you that like less than 14% of oil is, is, is converted into gas and they never mentioned to you when oil went back down to 30 40 dollars a barrel they never mentioned to you or gave you an explanation why gas still kept going up even though oil was going down to rock bottom shouldn't the price of gas have cut in half and shouldn't the price of food cut in half because the price of transporting the food got cheaper hmm they always find a way to get you eh the price of oil is still down nearly half from what it was then. The price of natural gas remains in total collapse mode. And the cash flow negative fracking industry is getting uh, morose. But 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 guys, uh, fracking has been always always operating at a loss. They think if they the more they they produce, the more debt they're... I don't know. They're producing more and more in record numbers trying to frack to catch up to the mass... Yeah, it's not going to fly. Uh, trying to curtail the bleeding by cutting investments, cutting purchases, cutting unemployment trying to persuade investors that they should send even more money their way. Enjoy reading Wolf Street and want to support using uh, ad blockers. I totally I totally get why. But want to support the site, you can donate. I appreciate it immensely. Click on the beer and iced tea mug to find out how. So guys, don't forget to support. Uh, from time to time, there's the odd article that comes up that on here and uh, on Wolf Street. And I would love to have him on Mike in the Night or even Trends in the Housing Market. So, so Wolf, uh, uh, Richard, if you're um, watching this, I highly doubt you'd be watching my channel. But if you are, I have a show called Mike in the Night on Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Western Seaborg time. And I have guests come on. You could add me on Skype, Mike Martins, 1980. And uh, also on Trends in the Housing Market every Wednesday night, we'll be discussing the housing trends for the last, I don't know, seven years of this right here, Trends in the Housing Market. Longest running trends uh, trends housing show in friggin' the history of the universe. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Biggest stock, up, biggest stock market melt-up. Canadians can't cover their bills. Losing 100 subs a day. Minimalist explains her simple life. Go into the channel and be part of the conversation. And don't forget to come on live if you like to contribute to the channel. Thanks for watching. And guys, don't forget to buy a t-shirt off my store. And if you want to message me, go ahead and find me, Mike Martins, on YouTube. Um, on YouTube, on Facebook. I have 117,000 followers on Facebook. So there's a lot of fake, fake ones out there. Just message this one and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.